This is how you can make punk poster designs using old magazines and Adobe Photoshop. <laughs> In this tutorial, I'll guide you step by step through using Adobe Photoshop to create a punk poster by collaging some like old magazine cutouts and using some of my free fonts. Whether you're a seasoned designer or if you're just starting out, this cut and paste process is always so much fun and it's super accessible. So grab your leather jackets and some safety pins because we're about to go pure DIY. But Grok is not about a uh, success. And create some punk poster power. So first of all, I went out to my local charity shops to try to find some scraps to sort of collage together to make the artwork for this poster. And I gotta give a massive shout out to my friend Kai Blackwell at Lab13 for giving me the encouragement to dip the toe back into collaging art. If you haven't checked out the podcast me and him recorded, it's Metalworks episode two. I'll leave the link in the description. Go listen to that. He is such a legend and a total gold mine of inspiration. After a little bit of like rummaging around the charity shops in my area, I found this absolute gem of a spot. Look at all these magazines. I think I spent about 50 Swedish kroner, which is like four euro 50 on five or six magazines and books to scrap together. And I was delighted with this little haul. Now back in the studio, I'm gonna start digging through these books and mags that I picked up. Straight off the bat, I am loving the frame on this Dragon Chronicles thing. I also grabbed this book on the MiG-21 fighter jet. I love military like aesthetic. <laughs> It's gonna work really well with some different sort of clashing elements. That's really the best ingredients for punk style graphics. We want some conflicting visual language to make it look really gritty and scrappy. I also grabbed one on the old British Vulcan. Look at the camo in this thing. I'm flicking through the book, I'm seeing these like amazing control panels and these old photographs already have that sort of halftone texture that's gonna look so nice. This magazine from the Franco-Prussian War is packed to the gills with the good stuff. Look at these old sort of Baroque looking paintings and gritty old photos from the 1870s. Here is another hidden treasure, this old biology book from the 80s. It's got these sick scientific drawings of like cells and bones and stuff. It kind of gives me flashbacks to secondary school. And as well, I grabbed this geography one about the world that has these sick like Renaissance scientific drawings, creepy old portrait paintings, old photographs of bygone technology and awesome geometric graphics of the planets and the solar system, like loads of stuff to work with. To throw in some visual curveballs as well, I've got some of my favorite mangas. Featuring some of that refined manga character design is gonna juxtapose quite nicely with some of the more chaotic design language that we're gonna incorporate in this. So now it's time to get slicing. But I'm sorry, today we are gonna go all digital. I think it'd be a shame to chop up these cool old books. <laughs> To get the ball rolling, I've got me books here and my little printer scanner combo. This is only a Canon Pixma. It was about 80 or 90 quid. I've installed the Canon Scan Utility app and I've made a little folder on my desktop. I'm just calling it the Punk Poster Scans. And this is where all of our scanned images are gonna end up. I flicked through the books and magazines and found some images that I like. And I'm gonna start with this cool castle looking thing. So we just pop it there on the scanner face, close the lid, go back over to our app and say photo and scan that photo. I'm just scanning these in as PNGs at about 600 DPI. But look at this at 600 DPI, I'm zooming in here. You can see all the beautiful half toning and it's picking up so much details from the paper and the image itself, it's, it's wonderful. As I said, I'm going through the books, picking out different images that I think will work as textures or more focal points and characters and I'm just rinsing and repeating the process. I swear to god this took me all day but once I had about 20 or 30 different images I figured that was probably enough without making the full design too busy. Here you can see the pages that I've scanned, loads of different types of images from illustrations to photographs, got a little manga boy in there from Demon Slayer, just loads of conflicting sort of styles that will work really nicely to lock in that punk aesthetic. Yo, sorry to jump in here, but you know only about 30% of you guys are subscribed. So give me a like, hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with the metal and punk creative content. Getting started cutting some of these elements out to using our punk poster, I begin by making a new artboard. It's gonna be A3 in a vertical orientation. Then I've opened seven or eight of these PNGs into Photoshop here. As always, I start pretty rough and ready. I'm using our marquee tool here to 
make a selection of the more square images. In some of the more detailed images, I'm going in with the polygonal lasso tool. As you can see, I'm cutting these figures out quite roughly. Again, copying them, going back to our punk poster artboard and pasting it in. I think the polygonal lasso tool is kind of perfect for this job. If you were going in with a scissors and paper, you know, you're going to be getting some quite straight cuts. So with the polygonal lasso tool, we get quite a similar effect. In some images that are more easily isolated, I'm just using the magic wand tool, selecting the white and pressing delete. Then going in with the polygonal lasso tool, making a selection of it and copying that out. There's a lot of rinsing and repeating here and when I drop them in on the artboard I'm just making some different selections while I figure out how some of these images will go together in the main collage as I go. On some of the pages that have been printed in a half tone effect the magic wand doesn't work too well but you can go in with refine edge and soften and bring up the contrast on the edge to get a cleaner cut. This does take quite a long time but honestly I sort of love photo bashing like this. I sort of zone out and my mind does be wandering. It's always nice to stick on like an audio book when doing this sort of monotonous work and the hours do melt by in a real satisfying way. This is more or less the same process over and over for all of the pages, so I'm not gonna bore you here. I'll just jump forward until I've got all of my images cut out and laid on the artboard. If you're a bit of a digital kid and you don't wanna go bin dipping for old magazines. Oh, Jesus. The moment you try and do anything, someone comes along and tries to stop you. Well, the legends at Envato Elements have given you guys a 70% discount on your first month of a subscription. I'm telling you, this site is a goldmine for stock photos, 3D models, fonts, graphic templates, and so much more. It is one of the best resources a designer can have, so check out the link in the description and start today. So here we go, these are all of the images that I think I want to use for this design. So to sort of get a little bit of a feel for where I'm gonna start, I just turn off each individual layer and start at the bottom. To start laying them out, I really thought that this Celtic frame I got on that Dragon Chronicles thing uh, is gonna look really nice. So I just laid it in the bottom left-hand corner. I then duplicated it and spun it around 180 degrees and threw the second one up into the top right corner. I've then got some of these images that are more sort of visual noise, like I really like the texture on this thing. I don't know what the hell it is, is it coral or something? So I laid that on the bottom. Then with our polygonal lasso tool, I'm going in and I'm making a selection sort of following the interesting shape of this thing and press delete. I felt that some of these images that lend themselves more as textures would be perfect for laying down as a base panel. Whereas some of the more refined cut out images of figures and items like the cannon, for example, they'll be more in the foreground of the overall design. I felt that these little angel demon things would be better isolated off the background. So I'm going in with my pen tool and then polygonal lasso tool just to chop them out quite roughly. I think they have that sort of real cheeky like Warhammer sort of look to them, you know. I don't know if this is Albrecht Dürer or one of the old greats, but I really love the aesthetic. I felt it would be a shame if they were just, you know, a flat square panel. There in the top right corner, I put that satellite photo of a mountain range up on the top because, let's face it, the shapes and the texture of that is really interesting and uh, it's quite appealing to me so i think that'll work perfectly for a background panel as well this entire process is going to be remarkably similar to as if you were using paper and laying these out in a collage like you know in the physical realm i often remember my old design teacher in college uh, louise fortune shout out louise <laughs> Hello, Ebrinian. She said that the layers in Photoshop really do work in the same way as if you were collaging with paper and glue. And let's face it, graphic designers up until the 80s really didn't have access to any digital equipment, so they were making posters and designs by hand. It's quite satisfying seeing this design sort of build up. There is no real rules here. I am just layering the images in a way that I feel is aesthetically pleasing to me. Obviously, everyone has their own preferences. So you, for example, might do it in a completely different way. And that is A-OK, -okay, you know, you're your own master. As I go, I'm just sort of refining edge and I'm playing with the levels to make different parts stick out more with just a little bit more contrast. Purely by eye again, there is no right and wrong because we want this to have that cut and paste punk aesthetic. I then felt that I did need a few more design elements to fill out the panel a little bit more. So I'm going in and I'm chopping out some different key points of interest, for example, this barbarian dude, making rough selections with the magic wand tool and then using a hard eraser to super roughly cut them out from the background. The beauty of this is you can be as fast and as rough as you want because it will just succeed in furthering that grungy feeling of the overall design. I'm doing the same here by taking some different sort of textures and dropping them in the background as sort of a base sheet, providing more visual noise and a few little splashes of color here and there. 
after taking this beautiful piece from the back of a Hunter Hunter manga in really high contrast, just to be a really sharp focal point for the center of the panel. With our composition laid out, I then put a black and white adjustment layer over all of the layers, and I just go in and give it a pass of playing with the levels and the contrast. I then make a group of all of our layers and call it base plate. I then duplicate it and merge it, so we have one image all flattened. I then duplicate that and make it black and white by pressing Control, Shift, Alt, and B. That way I've got two different base plates that I can play with. Then with our merge layers, I open up Camera Raw and with the color one, I drop the saturation a little bit because bumping the contrast kind of made it a bit too saturated. I then up the texture and the clarity just a little bit to make it a little bit crispier and I rinse and repeat with the black and white layer. While I go on to the next stage of beginning to put the details of the gig in because this is a punk poster at the end of the day. Let's not forget that this is going to be for a gig. <laughs> Jesus, my head is absolutely scrambled. This is the third time I've tried to record this tutorial. This is the longest I've ever spent on a tutorial. I'll tell you a little bit about what happened. So I recorded all of the voiceovers for this video and the whole thing is like clipping the bits. It's completely unusable, so I have to do it again. This video is fucking cursed. And you'd like whip up the flyer and put together one of those like real dodgy. Are you okay? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I won't. I won't do a video, I promise. <laughs> yeah. And this big brain turned down my first potential YouTube sponsor, cause I am punk as fuck. And I might be dying inside. Even though it was a digital design product, I just felt it didn't really suit you guys and it didn't really suit the channel. I really don't expect you guys to do anything. The fact that you're watching is just amazing in itself. Well, if you do want to help me continue making videos for the channel, check out my assets, my font store, even some of my merch. If you want to pick something up, it'll really go such a long way. Thank you so much, legends. For the poster details, I decided to pick a savage gig that I'm sadly missing. It's going to be Municipal Waste, Gel and Undeath playing in Ireland. Sadly, no Swedish dates. Boo hoo, poor me. <laughs> But yeah, I figured it would be an awesome little tour to kind of lash the details together. This is unofficial, by the way, purely for educational purposes. I grabbed some of my gritty tape assets from my Savage Assets pack. Link is in the description. And I'm going to lay them down underneath where I'm going to put the logos. Because this is such a busy design, the logos will get lost. So a nice flat tape background is going to be lovely to let those logos pop out. I'm very loosely dropping them on the artboard here to kind of get a feeling of where I want the details to be. I'm using a little bit of free transform to stretch them out a bit and dropping the logos above the tape layer. Considering Municipal Waste are the headliners of this tour, I'm making sure their logo is the biggest and near the top of the flyer. So the main focus will be on them with Gel and Undeath being equal sizes as the support acts for the tour. Then at the bottom right hand corner, I'm just getting some more of my tape assets and I'm making them nice little small boxes down at the bottom to drop the nuclear blast logo and the dme logo on top they are putting up the tour i'm using another one of my tape assets this is white tape i've just inverted it to black and i'm cutting out a nice long strip there putting on the top that's going to be the top details and then i'm cutting smaller parts out to put underneath the band logos i'm making sure that all of this tape is the same width uh, even though i am stretching out different parts of it we want it to be the same width because we want this to look like it's all from the same roll of tape now i'm using one of my free fonts you can get in the spearhead goodie bag it's called the storm it's a really nice wide sans serif display really nice grit on it i'm using this for all of the clear details for example there DME and K2 Agency present and then Tour 2023 and here on the bottom left hand corner I'm gonna have the three Irish dates so I'm gonna have the dates in the storm here and then I'm gonna have the cities also in one of my free fonts Siege Engine which you can also get in the goodie bag feel free to download that use that in all your projects share it with your mates as well you know share the love I want to I want to provide some real nasty quick and easy fonts to use for you know your metal punk and hardcore artworks you might have noticed i am not using any guys or grids for this i'm going pure rough and ready 
and I'm just feeling things out, nudging stuff around by eye to get a nice balanced composition for the whole poster. That'll give our poster that vibe of perfect imperfection, which gives so much character and charm to designs, and that's why most of us fell in love with the punk poster aesthetic back in the day. For some final nip tuck, I just figured that I'd actually embiggen the municipal waste logo a little bit more. But then thought it'd be kind of cool to bring those little demon boys up, so they're overlapping over the municipal waste logo a little bit, um, just to give it a little bit more of that cut and paste feeling that we're going for. To provide a little bit of extra nastiness, I've taken these awesome razors that I scanned. This is also in my Savage Assets pack link in the description. And I'm dropping them into the corners there just to provide a little bit more visual interest and to make it a little bit more metal, literally. The guy just would literally out of nowhere just yell, SLAYER! You know, just now I'm taking one of my gritty damaged poster textures, I'm overlaying that over the top, I'm inverting it, and then I'm putting it on screen as a blend mode, so you just get those sort of creases coming over the top to make it look like a flyer that someone gave you outside a gig, you know, it's all creased in someone's pocket. So with a few more little processes of nip tuck, just pushing things around until they looked sort of right to my eye. Then I grabbed this plastic texture out of my Savage Assets, laid it over the top to see how it would look. I thought it looked crap because it muted a lot of the vibrancy. So then after that, I merged all of the artwork onto one layer, opened up Camera Raw, just played around with our color values a little bit, dropped the saturation and increased the texture. And with that, it looks like we are onto the glamour shots. <laughs> And there we go, a super gritty punk poster design using a little bit of old, a little bit of new, and it was so much fun to make. Don't hesitate to drop a comment if you've got any questions about any of the processes that I used in the video. And if you found this video helpful, give us a little like and a subscribe and share it with all your mates. Also, feel free to join us in the Scrap Heap. It's our community Discord server. It's a great hangout spot. It's full of like illustrators, graphic designers, musicians, just a whole bunch of legends. And you can jump in and share your art, get critiques, and just have a bit of crack. So cheers as always, guys. Big love. I'll see you in the next one, and peace out.